50 years ago this month, on November 10th, 1969, a show called Sesame Street premiered on national educational television, the network that became PBS. Sesame Street and its cast of lovable puppets were an immediate hit with young viewers and their parents. Just one year after that first episode, Big Bird was on the cover of Time magazine with the headline, Sesame Street, TV's Gift to Children. Through songs and games, Big Bird and his friends taught kids to count and to learn their ABCs, but also to understand more complicated topics in our culture. NBC's Kristen Dahlgren looks back in our Sunday Spotlight. When you think Sesame Street, happy, happy, dance, dance. it's often memories of lovable characters. Cookie Monster here with Cookie! Or learning to count. Three fluttering butterflies! But what your preschool self probably didn't realize is that you were also learning some very real life lessons. Elmo thinks Whoopi's skin is a very pretty brown. Think of the year. It launched in 1969, the civil rights movement, and one of the things they did was make sure that young children, black, white, Latino, would all be able to see themselves on screen. And through the years, that cast has tackled some of our toughest issues, realizing that for children, some things may be best explained by a furry red monster and a fluffy-haired fairy. Because your feelings are important and it's all right to, to feel, feel lots of different feelings. Why is it important that kids learn that they can talk about sad things? My mommy and daddy, they got divorced. Yeah. And, well, I had a lot of big feelings. I was... I was confused, I was angry, I was sad. Characters who talked on a child's level as the nation's divorce rate or homelessness skyrocketed. We don't have our own apartment anymore and we've been staying in all different kinds of places. Lily explained it to us um, and she said that even though they have um, some trouble that they can still love each other. In the 80s, as sex abuse scandals rocked the headlines, Sesame realized that children needed to know grown-ups would believe them. I told you all along that there was a Snuffleupagus, my best pal. He's not imaginary, but you never believed me. From now on, we'll believe you whenever you tell us something. When the airwaves filled with hope for peace in the Middle East, so-called Muppet diplomacy was born. It would be in Hebrew as well as Arabic, and really a huge opportunity to help children see one another and not just the differences but the commonalities. A version of Sesame Street can be seen in 150 countries, inspiring girls in Afghanistan, comforting kids in refugee camps, or reducing the stigma of HIV and AIDS. We all know you can't get HIV just by touching someone or by being friends with them. It's not just that we're picking issues, it's only when it's brought to our attention that this is something having a real impact on young children. It has to be something big. Yes, and it has to be something where we know we can make a difference. And often it's, if not Sesame Who. In 1983, instead of recasting the beloved Mr. Hooper, Sesame decided to confront his death head on. Big Bird, when, when people die, they don't come back. Ever? No, never. When Mr. Hooper passed away, we were all really sad, especially Big Bird. But everybody told us that it was okay to feel sad and we can live with his memory. Sadness has never been something to shy away from. Sesame helped legions of kids process 9-11 at their level. If you're ever in a fire, go to the firefighters. They may look a little scary, but they're there to help you and take care of you, okay? Okay. We are always bringing hope and optimism and resilience to children. Whether through the first autistic Muppet or special content for families dealing with addiction, it turns out Sesame Street and Main Street USA have never been far apart. For Sunday Today, Kristen Dahlgren, New York.